The latest report was this incredible increase in jobs and hiring. And people were thrilled. The stock market says cool. But the Fed says, you know what? It looks like we're going to have to raise rates again. So this will bring on a new round of inflation. This will be another hit on the real estate market. They, their goal is to get people fired. Uh, our top article that we put up here is from the Epoch Times, where they raised the point that this um, brouhaha over the balloon is just the very tiniest tip of the iceberg in terms of how the Chinese spy on us. And um, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. So the article touches on a number of groups. So I just rattle them off here. Uh, human intelligence gathering, transnational repression schemes, cyber theft and hacking, intellectual property theft, and even harvesting of America's genetic material. So in various times we've seen these kinds of stories. I think where this article comes up a little light is they don't talk about the, cor the capture elites that make up corporate America who are helping China, and it doesn't really touch on the local politicians around the country who are captured elite serving China. Um, somewhere there needs to be a more complete list of this, but the, the take-home message is that um, China has penetrated America in more ways than you can even begin to realize in terms of uh, information they're gathering on us uh, as part of the run-up to the war that they are fully expecting to have with America. There's something called the Yale Council. Let's see if I can find it. The Yale College Council. So here it is, you know, um, Black History Month. And so their brilliant contribution to the month was to make several suggestions about what us white folks should do. Now, the first suggestion really made the most sense in my mind. Support black businesses, of course. So that's no issue. The part, though, that was a little strange, the second one was that everybody should put blacks at the front of the line. So you're standing in a store somewhere, there's any black folk there, put them to the front of the line. A little much. It'd be an awkward moment for anybody. So the Yale College Council said, as a gesture towards the black race, if you're walking by a puddle, take your coat and put it on the puddle so it's easier for black people to walk over the puddle. People who are involved in the medical world have heard of what's called the Wellcome Trust. Uh, it's a foundation, much like the Rockefeller Foundation, that um, it focuses on the pharmaceutical industry. They have, um, the part here that makes this article so important and strange is that they are taking a page from, of all people, DARPA. So DARPA is the acronym for the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, okay? Uh, so all the really cool technology where people come up with wild ideas, some of them will knock on DARPA's door and say, hey, can you give us some money to develop this? So DARPA is kind of like a government venture capital agency They've been pretty well, pretty successful. So for some reason, the Wellcome Trust has decided that they're going to uh, hire away some of the people in DARPA and start their own biomedical DARPA. Well, there's another biomedical DARPA in the government already anyway, which is called BARPA or BARDA, BARDA. In any event, so this initiative is it's a global health initiative called the Wellcome Leap. The problem I have with this is if you're following transhumanism, this is clearly uh, moving in that direction. So uh, a rather nasty letter needs to go to these people and tell them they need to focus on other types of technology than transhumanism. It's a long article. It's very detailed. It's very interesting and important, and I highly recommend that you read it. it turns out that a lot of black folk are leaving the city. In fact, 9% have left New York City in the last 10 years. And so people are saying, well, what's going on here? It's stupid, guys. It's the same economics. It doesn't matter what your race is. It's the same economics. It's too expensive to live in New York City. Rents are out of control, and not to mention crime. So black community, just like any you know, other community, is saying, you know what? There are better places to live than this. We're gone. We are gone. People who smoke pot do not do well under surgery. 
we have the discovery that if you smoke pot and you need surgery, you have to be administered more anesthetic, not less, for it to work. Now, there might be some rational explanation for this, which we'll find out later, but to me, this is just one more example of why legalizing pot is such a stupid idea. So, moving on. Now, it's been raised before, but there's this other article. Again, we've got the link for this post. The tar title is, Public Schools Are Avoiding CRT Ban with Trojan Horse of Social-Emotional Learning. Yes, we've been talking about this for a while already. Yes, social-emotional learning is just this broad title, and they are taking, uh, if you will, principles of critical race theory and kind of slipping them in there as well as, uh, uh, quote, equity issues, DEI, as part of it. So social-emotional learning has become this, is a catch-all for all this other stuff. It, it fools people. They think it's good. Social-emotional learning, what is there to complain about? But then you, you, have to look, you have to look deeper, and that's what this article does. So um, just to make the point here, a quick passage, um, so these uh, kids at a school in Fairfax County, Virginia, were shown this video, and uh, people from all racial backgrounds actually took uh, issue with this video because it showed white people as cartoon mosquitoes as a way to uh, demonstrate microaggressions. Somebody has a problem, and I am going to assert that it's not us. Meantime... Uh, polls records show a record number of Americans worse off financially since Biden took office. The poll here shows that 41% of Americans feel that financially they are doing worse, all right, since Biden took office. Now, you have uh, people who are liberal and pro-Biden desperately trying to grab at any little data point they can, and the jobs report would be considered significant. However, you have to look Beyond that, little things like the growth in real wages. Real wages have not grown for almost two years. Um, there is a blip here and there, but when you look at the, the, the whole timeline, it's been going down. It's not keeping up with inflation at all. So um, this just really illustrates that things are not as they appear. Now, uh, uh, for Connecticut Commie of the Week, we have uh, da, 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 Alicia Rome, Roman Delgado. Now, it was hard to find really good information on her, but the problem with her is, uh, not problem, but one of the noteworthies is that she's been a Connecticut communist for a very long time and was, in fact, uh, credited with working to create a Communist Party chapter in Hartford in the 1980s. Okay, so she's been around a while. That said... In trying to hunt her down, there just isn't that much on it. But we'll keep working on it, just to let you know. And the last piece, we have a new section now called the Liberal Hit Job of the Week. You know, the liberal media just can't, can't leave it alone. Um, this is about John Brunig, but I want to quickly mention um, Alma. I'm trying to remember her last name, but she's in the Greenwich Press a lot. She's been attacking uh, MAGA Republicans on a consistent basis. And she just, you know, she's on automatic. She can't get over herself. There's a piece I did on her last year. But, the, but with John Bruni, okay, so he's trying to take the issues that developed in the uh, November 22, 2022 election and try to drive a wedge into the GOP by suggesting that they're somehow, quote, fractured. No. Uh, John, when people disagree with each other, it's healthy. It's called debate and discussion. It's how you resolve differences, all right? That's what the GOP does. The Democrats, hypocrites, who just can't get over yourselves. Anyway, um, this is a silly piece. And nonetheless, I think it's worth studying because you extract useful information from it. And that's all I have to say about that tonight. Thank you.